Wake Up Groundhog by Susanna Leonard Hill, illustrated by Jeffrey Eblinger. Phyllis was not like the other groundhogs. She liked to get up in February instead of March. She liked to be outdoors instead of indoors. When the rain soaked the earth, everyone else huddled in their burrows. Phyllis splashed in puddles. You're sopping wet, her mother scolded. I like the way the mud feels between my toes, Phyllis explained. Her mother shook her head and said to Phyllis's father, That's Phyllis. When the spring water, stream water rushed icy cold and fierce between the banks, Phyllis went waiting. You'll catch a cold, Aunt Patsy warned. Phyllis's mother just shook her said, head. That's Phyllis. When the August sun beat down, turning the meadow brown, Phyllis picked blackberries, warm and sweet. You'll bake in this heat, Aunt Sassy cried. And guess what Phyllis's mother said? That's Phyllis. When I grow up, Phyllis said, I'm going to be Puxatawney Phil. Oh, don't be silly, dear, her mother said. Puxatawney Phil is a fellow. The other grown-ups laughed, but Phyllis knew she could do it, even if no one took her seriously. And then, one February morning, Phyllis woke up early. She crawled out of bed and crept up the tunnel. The first light of morning shone on the mouth of the groundhog hole. From the big pine tree came the steady drip, drip, drip of snow melting. Running water whispered in the brook. The air was sharp, but something about it had changed. Spring was coming early. She skipped back down the tunnel to wait for Uncle Phil to wake up and make his prediction. Phyllis, would you quit wiggling, complained Phil Jr. Yes, Phyllis, said Pete. Some of us are trying to sleep. How can you sleep when spring is in there, said Phyllis. Phil Jr. looked at Pete. Only Phyllis would think spring was coming in the middle of winter, he said. It is not the middle of winter, Phyllis said. It's Groundhog Day. Phil Jr. and Pete were already dozing off. Pretty soon, Aunt Sassy got up and tried to wake up Uncle Phil. She shook him and tugged his whiskers. She shouted in his ear. Everyone else in the burrow woke up, but Uncle Phil kept right on snoring. What is all the ruckus? asked old Grandfather Groundhog. It's Groundhog Day, said Aunt Sassy, and Phil is still asleep. I'm afraid he's getting too old for this job. I'll do it, Phyllis said, and everyone just laughed. Puxatawney Phil has never been a girl, said Pete, and it never will be, said Phil Jr. Nobody's going to get the job until Phil gives it up, said Aunt Sassy. Now how are we going to wake him up? Let's dump snow on him, Phyllis suggested. A good idea, said Aunt Sassy. It worked. Uncle Phil grumbled. It's time it up, Aunt Sassy said. It's Groundhog Day. I'm sleepy, complained Uncle Phil. If you're too tired, said Phyllis, I'll be happy to do the job for you. Hrump, replied Uncle Phil. Not just anyone can be Puxatawney Phil. But I'm not just anyone, said Phyllis. Is your name Phil, asked Uncle Phil. No, Phyllis admitted, but Puxatawney Phil's real name isn't always Phil. Well, yes, grumbled Uncle Phil, but were you born on Groundhog Day? I was born on the day after, Phyllis said. Not good enough, said Uncle Phil. Besides, you're a girl. When the time comes, one of the young fellas will fit the ticket. Phil Jr. and Pete smirked. They can't even feel that spring is in the air, Phyllis said scornfully. We'll never have an early spring, said Uncle Phil. In all my years as Puxatawney Phil, it's never happened even once. It's going to happen this year, Phyllis said stubbornly. Aunt Patsy chuckled. That's Phyllis, she said. Phyllis wished people would stop saying that. Phyllis, come with me and see what the world looks like in February, said Uncle Phil, and then you'll know that I am right. Phyllis could not believe her luck. They walked up the long tunnel and emerged into the light. Uncle Phil sat up on his hind legs and he sniffed the air. Just as I thought, he said, six more weeks of winter. Early spring, said Phyllis. 
Look at all that snow, said Uncle Phil. Feel the cold. The snow is melting, said Phyllis. The water is running in the brook. Uncle Phil lifted his head and listened. So it is, he said. I don't hear that as often as I used to. The chickadees are singing their spring song, said Phyllis. I've never heard the chickadees on Groundhog Day, said Uncle Phil. And look, Uncle Phil, no shadows. My eyes aren't as clear as they used to be, said Uncle Phil. And don't you smell the sweetness of spring, asked Phyllis. Uncle Hil Phil sniffed. Just a hint, he murmured. And there's something else, said Phyllis. She finally figured out what else felt different about the air all morning. Feel the wind? It's from the west, the spring zephyr. Well, I'll be jiggered, said Uncle Phil. Phyllis was right, Uncle Phil announced when they returned to the burrow. We are going to have an early spring. It's time for me to retire. But who will be the next Puxatawney Phil, asked Aunt Patsy. I will, said Phil Jr. No, I will, said Pete. Sorry, boys, said Uncle Phil. You missed the signs, too. You can't mean, blustered Phil Jr. Yes, boys, said Uncle Phil. The t best Phil for the job is Phyllis. But what about the rules, whined Pete Jr. and Phil? If Mother Nature can bend the rules once in a while, said Uncle Phil, we can too. Phyllis heard the water in the brook and the song of the birds. She saw that there were no shadows and she felt the spring zephyr. That's Phyllis, her mother said proudly. Phyllis grinned and said, Puxatawney Phyllis. Wake Up Groundhog by Susan Leopard Hill